Welcome back to another stream and in this one we are going to be adding a copy button to my code component in my blog posts. I'll give you an example. So this is Ray Wenderlich. I'm not sure how to pronounce that but anyway. Um, so if you click this copy button in here and then if you just paste it, it's going to copy all of this text into your clipboard without you having to just select everything and, it, and then do command C. This is specifically good for people who are using screen readers and accessibility options because it's really difficult to select text when you're using a screen reader. You probably just want to click the copy button and it's, it's a convenience. If I'm just copying and pasting stuff like this tutorial, let's say, I'd rather just click this copy button, go back to my terminal and then paste this command there. So that's our use case in here. But I don't want to use text. I don't want to have some sort of notification like this. I just want to make it a bit simple because I only have a single blog post with code component in it. Um, so this is the mock that I'm gonna go with. I have designed another version in here um, and this version has the copy text outside the code component and has a sliding animation. And then it says copy it if it's successful. But I thought that's a bit too much given that I have only a single component and this is the simplest design that I could think of. So I'm gonna use a React icon in here and then when you click on it, it's going to copy everything that's inside the code component into your clipboard and it's going to turn into this paste icon. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to open my blog post markdown render in here and let's just split this vertically. Let's go to React Icons blog post. So what do I have in here? These things are located inside the syntax highlighter component and the syntax highlighter component is something that I use as a dependency. And if I want to extend this with a button functionality, like copy to clipboard button functionality, then I need to encapsulate this thing in its own div. As far as things stand right now, it seems like I need to extract this into its own component and then I have to inject my own component instead of the syntax highlighter in here. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, so I'm going to create a new component in here. I'm going to copy and paste the simplest component that I have, which is heading. Um, and I'm going to call this new component code. And let me just rename these things in here. So these are going to be code. What does this take? It takes a language. It takes children. So this is the children that it's going to take. It takes a language and it's also going to take is dark because it, it needs to change between themes, right? When we switch between dark and light modes in our blog like this, it needs to change color. Oh, the server is not running. In the meanwhile, we might as well. Oh, the server is running actually. Interesting. Okay, whatever. We'll fix it. It probably is complaining because it can't compile this piece of code, which is okay. So let's go on with the encapsulation thingy. Uh, we have, you're gonna have children. Uh, we are gonna have language, which comes from here. And then we're also going to have is dark. This is not going to be an H2, this is gonna be a div. And let's remove all of these things. I want to make it as simple as possible. Uh, the children are going to go inside the syntax highlighter component, which is located well, I can just copy and paste this thing from here, right? Okay, let's do that. And I need these things in here. Well, we can pretty much remove it, but I'll keep it for now. Um, let's rename the prop types. So this first one is gonna be children, language, is dark. And is dark is obviously required. Um, language, well, that shouldn't be required. And obviously we require the children if you want to display some, some sort of stuff on the screen. So language is going to be prop types dot, actually no, this is default props. What am I doing? It's, it's, it can be null. Like we don't have to specify the language. Um, so I'm gonna do something like this, just pass the children inside the syntax highlighter. So let's put the children in here and the language is going to go in there. All right, let me just remember how we pass the style. Okay, so this is how we differentiate between the themes. So I'm gonna do style in here and I'm literally gonna copy this logic and paste it in there. Yep, that should work. And uh, now we can remove this, remove that part. And this component can be code 
and we have to import this thing now, which comes from there. And everything should work as before. So we managed to extract this thing into its own div now, into its own component now, sorry. And if we switch to dark mode, yep, everything seems to be working just the same. We weren't expecting any changes and yeah, that's, that's the correct behavior right there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is to add a library that manages all the copying stuff across all the browsers. Fortunately, there's another NPM library that takes care of this problem for us. There is an NPM library for everything. Okay, so as you can see, they're using the same icon right there. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna come back to my project and I'm gonna install this library. So NPM I react to copy to clipboard and then I'm gonna just save that as a dependency, All right? In the meanwhile, let's take a look at how we're gonna use this thing. So this component seems to be a clickable thing. So whatever you put inside triggers the copy to clipboard action. And then it takes a function or it calls a function when you click on it. And then the text that it's gonna copy, it goes inside this block, which happens to be the children that we give to the syntax highlighter, right? Yeah, okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna get that from there and let's put all of it right here. We can do the cleanup there. So this text thing in here is gonna be the children. We don't have to worry about the on copy function for now, so I'm just going to delete it. We're going to come back to this later on, so yeah, definitely. And let's import this thing. That looks fine. And yeah, we should be able to see a button that says copy the clipboard with the button. And if you click it, then it should copy everything to our clipboard, hopefully. Okay, the button's right there. Um, it looks ugly and it looks nothing like the designs that I had, but let's test if this thing works. So I'm just gonna click the button. Okay, I've just clicked it and I'm gonna come back to Sublime Text and I'm gonna paste it. Yeah, it seems to be working. Let's try it with this one. Okay, that works. Okay, now that we know this thing works, we have to make this thing pretty, right? And this is where we take a look at this blog post because this blog post is about React icons. We are going to put a React icon right here and that's gonna be the copy icon. The users click right and it seems like i can do something like this so instead of a button right here i can just put a copy icon and this thing is going to turn into a copy icon sweet okay i just need to import it like that okay well i'm referring to my own blog post in my own stream well anyway so let's browse this favicon file so you can see a list of all the favicons this file is qu this file is quite convoluted and in one of my blog like in this blog post i tell you how you can browse all of these icons i've done that before starting the stream and this is the icon that i want to use this is the copy icon and this is the clipboard icon that i want to use all right so copy and clipboard so we can come back to this file and search for copy and this is this seems to be the one that i want to use fa reg copy okay i'll try it if it should be the one that i want if it's not then we can always come back and do some more research so instead of a button i'm gonna put so let's remove this i'm gonna put fa reg copy in there and now that we should be seeing an icon instead of a button okay that's exactly what we wanted cool how can we move this thing to the right and we want to fix it to the top right corner of this code block right yeah so that's what it looks like in the designs that i make how do we do that so it turns out that's a bit more complicated and there is another stack overflow post because we are not programmers we just read stack overflow all day and just copy and paste stuff pretty much that's correct so this is what i have to do so the parent div has to have position relative and then i can put a children inside that parent div and then move it around freely using left and right like pixel values. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Up next is adding a SAS file. So we are going to create a SAS file in here. Let's call this SAS file code.module.sas. Code okay. And in this file, we're gonna have parent div style. And this is gonna have position relative, just like the stack overflow post said. And then we're gonna have copy button style. So this copy button style is going to have what? Position absolute and left. Okay, I can just copy these things and then do the cleanup in IntelliJ. So let's go back and paste these things. I'll do that, do 
that. Okay, okay. All right, now I have to assign these styles to be used inside blog post markdown. No, not, not here. Um, I have to use them inside the code components. Right, how do we import styles again? I never ever remember that. Okay, I'll just paste it in here and I'll use this file instead of the other one. And so we have parent div from here, copy button from there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so class name, parent div. This needs to take the copy button class name. So class name, copy button. Let's see what this did. I'm very interested to see if this worked. Okay, well, the icon is right there because you probably set the wrong pixel values. So instead of left 50, I probably want to do something like right 10. Yeah, and okay. I'll actually do like 14, let's try 14. I'm not gonna go with 50. Okay, yeah, that looks okay. Um, I kind of want to make these icon, make this icon a little bit bigger. Maybe I can try font size, um, 18 pixels. That should look good. Uh, yeah, that is accessible. Like that's maybe too big, but that's the whole point, right? We want to make sure that this is easy to click and it's obvious that this is a copy button. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. And there's one more modification that we still want to make. This on its own pretty much works, but remember um, I mentioned accessibility before, and I just want to make sure this button changes color um, when the user ho hovers over it. So that's one thing that we should make. So you're gonna do hover in here and I'll, um, I'll import the color picker thingy that we did. Um, color palette. Okay, so that's how we do it at import. So I'll just copy this. Um, probably need to do that. Maybe that. Okay. So what colors do we have for our website? Let's see the options. Um, I can go with blue. Well, color blue. Yeah, that's okay. What about light mode? Yeah, that looks fine, I guess. Yeah, 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 that that's okay for now. I mean, I can always change it later, but that looks good. Okay, I'll go with blue. I'll add a transition for this. So let's start with that. So change this animation timer. Add the, we, we need to add a transition in here, but it's not gonna be background color. It's just gonna be color. Come back here, okay. So can we select this when we are tabbing over stuff? No, because it's not a button, right? Okay, that's something that we might to change, might want to change. So maybe I can put this inside the button so that it becomes more accessible. And let's put that inside the button. All right, okay. Now we want to get rid of the button styles actually. So we want the background of this button to be transparent. So let's try that, okay. Yeah, that's much closer to what we wanted. And now when we are using the tab button, this um, copy button gets highlighted and you can click it using the space bar, I assume. So I clicked space a few times. Let me just try it on this one. Okay, space, and then, yeah, that copies the right thing. Okay, cool. Now we need to change the font um, color, right? Okay. Yeah, let's change the font color now. So, font, no, color, white here okay so color white needs to go there and we need to obviously change the button color to be black again once we switch back to light mode so for that we need to add a new style copy button um, actually I'll just move over this one to here so this is gonna be black 
this is going to be white and you're going to put that style in there so add back text a dollar sign put the copy button style in curly brackets right here So if it's if it's dark then it's going to apply the dark copy button style so this is white and when i click on this the color of the button should turn white yep that's working as expected now we, i feel like we need to move this a little bit upwards i'll go with 11 fine okay that looks great well that's pretty much it so when you're tabbing over things then you can still know that this thing is selected because it has a nice outline to it um, and when you click on it it copies the thing that you want into the clipboard now there's a final touch that I want to add and that's the changing icons so if you're gonna have a state in this button so when the user clicks on this thing it will turn into a different icon so the, when the user comes back to the blog they're going to see that they have copied this and it's going to be easier to follow, you know? Actually, that's very easy to do. Um, so we're going to add state. Set is copied. And let's import use state. Okay, so what this does is we, we set a state. This, the state is called is copied and set is copied is the function that sets the state and the initial state is false. Okay, so we are going to switch between two different icons in here and the first icon is going to be the copy icon and when we click on this thing, we're going to switch to the paste icon that you see in here so the user knows that they have clicked on this button before. All right, so we can we have to find the paste icon so I'm going to refer back to React Icons file in here and I'm going to search for clipboard because that was the name of the thing. FA clipboard, FA clipboard. There's an FA reg clipboard. Yeah, that's something that I want to use, I guess. I'll come back here. I'll import FA reg clipboard as well. So let's so if you're gonna differentiate between copied versus not copied. And if it's copied, then we're gonna display FA reg clipboard thingy. And if it's not copied, then we're gonna display the other one. So that goes there. That's very clean. Okay, now we need to change the state, obviously. And this is where we refer back to this thing, the onCopy function. So if you remember, we had the onCopy function at the beginning, but we removed it. I said, I'm going to come back to this. This is when I'm coming back to that. And so let's add that here. You can close all of these things now. Okay. So we want to call the set is copied function and set is copied is going to set the state to true clean up the file we need to define an alt text for this button I think aria label yeah that's what we want type an aria label I'm hard coding this there's there's no way for me to change this later like I'm, probably no one wants to change this unless they're translating the website to a different language but I'm not planning to do that I'll revisit this topic if I do so this should allow us to switch between two different icons now so let's go back to the website okay so when I click this, it's going to change the icon. See, that changed the icon, that changed the icon. And the last thing that we copied is this. So if I come back to Sublime Text and paste it, you're gonna see this thing. And let's copy this one, come back to Sublime and paste it. There you go. This is it. And yeah, that's basically the end. I hope you learned something new. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one, all right? Bye.